I can't think of two people who can give you more helpful advice than Odile and Claire. This session will cover the actual and sometimes emotional ways to enter and become successful in the design industry. Faithful and longtime supporters of Be Original Americas, as well as to so many famous and soon to be famous people and firms, Odile and Claire have made students a prime focus of their work with Wanted Design and its various satellite events. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce Odile and Claire. Thank you, Beth. Hello, everyone. I'm Claire Pizula. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. I am Odile Henault, the co-founder of Front to Design, and we are very pleased to be here with you today. Big thank you to Be Original America for having us. Um, I have to say Be Original America and Want to Design have been partnering for many years, and we definitely share the same values when it comes to work ethic and design ethic. So we are all going through challenging times, but especially you students, and we hope we will have some answers for you today. With this talk, all based on our personal experience and design industry knowledge. We want this talk, which we hope will be more than a talk, but a conversation. We want this to be energizing and filling you with optimism, hope, and new perspectives. So we are going to give you a quick introduction of who we are, what we do, and what Wanted Design is. We will give you some insights on what conscious design means to us and what it means to be a designer today. Then we will talk about how to start your career as a designer with resilience, empathy, and curiosity. We will continue with some business advices. And we will share some success stories that we witnessed over the past 10 years. Thank you for attending this event today. And since you're here, you're already making the right choice uh, by showing up. Before we get started, one thing we'll touch on today is curiosity. So here's the first action you can take. Prepare your questions and ask your questions. We'll keep a lot of time at the end to make sure we can answer your questions. But if you're more comfortable sharing your questions by email, you can also, also reach out to us uh, through our website. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about what we do and Odil will explain uh, how we met and how we got there. So what is Wanted Design? Sometimes we have a hard time summarizing what Wanted Design is because we do lots of things that involves a lot of people from very different countries. Wanted Design has become over the past decade an international platform dedicated to promote design, connect the various actors of the industry through virtual or physical events and Wanty Design helps create opportunities for designers, manufacturers, architects, and design students. Opportunities to meet industry peers, to discover products, talents, design studios, and companies. Today, Wanty Design is the producer of two trade events, Wanty Design Manhattan and Close Up, in collaboration with ICFF. Wanted Design is also a design festival in Brooklyn, which will hopefully resume in 2022. And for students and design educators, Wanted Design is a place, virtual or physical, with workshops, events, exhibitions, and even an award. We are the operator and curator of a design boutique in Brooklyn at Industry City. So online platform, trade events, design festival, design education, retail, that's what we do. But Wanted Design is also a network and a community of passionate professionals for whom design is at the center of the conversation. And it is with people that our platform keeps growing and evolving. Wanted Design has developed different channels from print to online to social media, to share design stories behind the scenes and grow the design voice to reach professionals, but also a general audience in the US and abroad. So how did we get here? Odile, I'll let you tell the story. 
Yes, um, wanted design is first a human story. And we'd like to share it because it's relevant and somehow it reflects many notions we will be talking about during that presentation. So how did we meet? So just so you know, we are both in front of each other. <laughs> we are in Brooklyn in our office, which is very nice. So how did we meet? We both were French New Yorkers for many years in the design world here in New York. We didn't know each other. I was running a design gallery in New York and Claire had left her position of North American marketing director for Roche Beaubois and was working independently on design projects when we met. A friend of ours introduced us to each other and it all started within the first time we met, we meet. And in that very first conversation we had in October, 2010. So we realized in talking that we had the same vision for creating a new design event in New York. And we had a different but complementary background, expertise and network. It was the right time, certainly the right project and also the right time for both of us. We were ready for it and New York was prepared for it too. After the big 2008 crisis, there was a tremendously talented community of design studios here in New York and all across of America with a strong entrepreneurial spirit. And they supported our project because they needed a platform that will showcase American design and designers that was missing at that time. And there was no official design week in New York, which was unbelievable for us. So we saw it as a blank canvas and an opportunity for us to build an original event reflecting truly what New York is about, at least what New York was about for us, and I think still is. And that was the foundation of Wanted Design, creating a rendezvous for the local and international design industry and community, combining culture and commerce. And when, when, I, when we talk about design, we mean everything that touches on where we live and how we live and what surrounds us. So from furniture, lighting, surfaces, to home accessories and interior design and architecture. So that was the, 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 the concept, an original and human scale event to facilitate connections, to rethink the traditional trade show format, to bring the design industry and community together and initiate collaborations, offering opportunities to develop business in the US, putting the spotlight on American design and creating a launch pad for young international designers like you. So for sure, we also had a great instinct <laughs> and trust in each other right away. So we are sharing that story for you to better understand who we are and also to illustrate how finding the right partner to work with is key to success. And we are thrilled to have celebrated the 10th anniversary of Wanted Design this year and we want to share this with a, a quick video that we love to look back at the past 10 years in music and images and all the greatest moments along those years. So let's look at the, at the short video.
love this. We love this video. So many great memories, so many unbelievable people and projects we have seen. Yeah, love that. So we hope you loved it too. And what can be better than to work with the same vision, the same pleasure, the same passion, and same commitment for more than 10 years with someone? So let me tell you, this is something we realize and we value every day with Claire, right? <laughs> so that brings us to the first important notion, serious notion we would like to talk about, being conscious. And in particular for you, being a conscious designer. So what does that mean? It's mainly about taking responsibility, taking responsibility of the impact a designer can have both on the environment and on shaping people's lives. So this notion of consciousness became more and more important year after year for us, and I have to say today more than ever. We created a Conscious Design Award three years ago already with Metropolis Magazine to spotlight the student's project that embraced those notions. And I invite you to check the 2021 winners. Uh, they are featured on Want to Design That Online, uh, our online exhibition. You should definitely check that. So the role, but also the responsibility of the designers in our world today is greater than ever. And you are really lucky as designers today recognized as a tool, a process, a need that goes far beyond designing nice products. So be conscious, be responsible, and think about the impact you can make and be relevant. Observe, respond to the world around you, design for the others in mind, and always choose the sustainable answer. Part of this consciousness notion is also being conscious about who you are, right? Where and what are your strengths? What can you best contribute to? And always, always be yourself, be your original, original as a person and original as a designer. So what is your contribution as a designer? and how you can be a successful one. Yes, for sure, it's your creative and designer skills, but it's also your personality. It's your sensibility, who you are, your work ethic, your ability to work with the others and for the others. So now that you know who we are and what we do and why you should definitely take our advice, we want to give you some key guidance as you prepare to enter your prof professional life. And we are going to use the current situation and the pandemic as context. For those of us who've been uh, lucky enough to stay healthy during this time, it feels that this pandemic has revealed how much we needed to be in charge of our lives, our purpose and our careers. We've seen during this last year, especially in the design field, that people have taken this opportunity to express creativity and jump into entrepreneurship. It was time for them to decide for themselves what they wanted to do and be or become and take action. They used the challenge as an opportunity. And this pandemic really challenged us to rethink to pause before taking action and to consider carefully our new way of doing things. We at Wanted Design also had to adapt and we experienced changes, lots of changes. More than anything, the situation forced us to stay focused and focused on what we love doing. It guided us to eliminate what was not essential and to be pragmatic. Through the changes, we face the challenge of rethinking our business model completely. We organize the team, but we move forward with the same energy that we've had since day one. We made sure to surround ourselves with individuals who believed in opportunities and who also saw the challenge as a way to grow. For you, leaving school and starting a career is intimidating, especially in the current situation but it should also create some motivation. Facing the wall is scary, but if you understand the wall you have to climb, then you can find a way over it. And your career is your first design brief. Use your designer's mind and your design process to look at your professional life. It is a powerful exercise that you can do at any point in your career. And we at Want to Design 
sit down on a regular basis to analyze, dissect, make changes, take action, making sure we're working towards our goals. The most important thing is to believe in yourself as a designer, find your purpose, find why you are a designer today, and then work hard and follow your dreams. We have a nice success story to share with you that illustrates well what we just talked about. Odile? Yeah, absolutely. We have many great examples, but one is this one of someone who debuted at Wanted Design in 2013 and that we have been following since then. And it's Chicago-based designer Stephen Hollenbeck. Uh, his past illustrates uh, really well the notion of perseverance, knowing what you are good at, what you really want to do, what are your goals and how to get there. So he's, so he's also someone who is generous and understanding the value of collaborations and sharing resources. He actually organized a group exhibit to present at Fonte Design in 2013. It was called Chicago Land, and we had more than 10 or 12 studios from Chicago. Uh, in 2014, they came back again as a group uh, at Fonte Design. And, and this is that year in 2014 that Stephen met Giulio Capellini, which was super important for him. And he was part of the same year of a talk that we organized at the Museum of Art and Design. And in 2016, he was selected to be the Americans and Honors 2016 recipient. And this is an award that we present with Jerry Ling and Bernard Design. The very same year, he was also part of the Wanted Design Transatlantic Creative Exchange, meaning he spent some time in residency at the French glass lab Meisenthal, uh, where he could experiment with, with glass, which is his passion. And uh, now he actually works uh, with Carpenters Gallery, one of the main uh, collectible design gallery all over the world, but here in New York. And he's represented by the gallery, selling his work to collectors and art dealers from all over the world. He has a passion for experimenting with materials, in particular using ice, to mold these pieces, bronze or glass, and it's absolutely unique. Uh, he put a lot of work uh, for sure, but he's also very good at networking, visiting the, the fair, uh, he's good at communicating, has always beautiful photo and, and, and videos on social media. And he actually succeeded in achieving his dream business model and continuing his creative path. So, yeah, so that brings us to a, another very important notion that we want to share and discuss with you. Generosity and empathy. So what is this? Empathy is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel, see things from their point of view, and imagine yourself in their place. Essentially, it is putting yourself in someone else's position and feeling what they must be feeling, visioning what they are experiencing. And even it's a very far and unknown territory for you, always use your sensibility as much as your creative skills. I think the pandemic situation certainly has changed a little bit the way you are looking at your career, uh, the way uh, you want to, what you want to focus on and the way you want to work and live, not for yourself, but for and with the others. So something to always keep in mind when you are working on a project, it's not about you, but about what you can bring to the others, right? How you can best respond to the problem, to the brief, and how much work you are ready to put into it. It's also working with others and sharing knowledge. And as you probably know, the more you give, the more you share, the more you also will learn and receive. So don't be afraid about difficult and complicated projects because you will feel so proud and rewarded when you successfully will put your creativity into it. And I'd like to quickly mention a workshop that we organized a few years ago with Central University in Mexico. That was an amazing experience. The topic was design under pressure. And it was in response to the terrible earthquake that happened in Mexico the year before. So we invited... Uh, 30 students to work together there in Mexico as if they were in a time of natural disaster, catastrophe in Mexico, and to creatively respond to it and bring solution to access food, medical care, shelters, and all that in 24 hours, Charette. 
And the ultimate goal was to come up with a design emergency force manifesto that hopefully could be implemented in all big cities to permanently, permanently have creative team to bring creative immediate solutions in a time of emergency. And the outcome was amazing, honestly, and it illustrates really well the notions of generosity and empathy that any creative should have and embrace. It was also a beautiful collaborative work, which is something Claire is going to speak about now, right? Collaboration and friendship. Yes, so the old collaboration and friendship, we believe in that very much. Um, when you make friends and you surround yourself with like-minded people who share the same values as you, um, you get closer to your goals, you get to your goals faster. You should think of designing your network like you would design for a brief. When you become part of this community that you designed, um, you don't have to move forward alone. You can uh, use the others to help you. And remember that what you fear, other designers might fear it too. The questions you have, other designers might have. So we always encourage young designers to get out there, meet people, attend events, ask questions, engage with their peers and exchange ideas. And, you know, even connect with designers you admire on social media, for example. There are so many ways to create uh, and craft your network. It is essential to start early because you might need someone today who will influence your path in a big way. So don't wait. We've seen many designers uh, grow in the past decade and the most successful ones are the ones who don't stay quiet. The ones who open their mind, share their ideas and collaborate with others. A great example uh, of this is this project that was born during the pandemic in June last year. Just to give you a bit of context about these three people you see now on the screen, um, after canceling our uh, events mid-March, including our signature program, the Design Schools Workshop, we paused for a moment and decided to host some online events in place of the traditional ones. It was a way for us to tell the designers uh, and our network, you're not alone, we're still here for you and we want to stay connected and keep the conversation alive. So with that in mind, we revisited our design school workshop and instead of a five day in-person workshop, we hosted a 48 hour design charrette with schools from France and the US with 30 students based at this time in many different time zones, as you can imagine. So it was quite a sleepless uh, experience for them. But what was beautiful was to see these young, recently graduated designers who were willing to take part of the workshop on a last minute call without really understanding what they were getting themselves into. But they were curious, they said yes, and they went for it. So there was this team, Team B, uh, they really stood out for us. The topic of the workshop was how can design respond to the current pandemic? And remember, that was June last year. And the specific theme for Team B was confinement and mental health. So Team B was composed of three students. You saw their um, faces earlier on the screen. Um, they didn't know each other, never met. They were from different schools, completely different backgrounds, different culture, even different mother tongue. Laura is from Puerto Rico, Nais is from France, and Kazuki, originally from Japan, was based in Chicago. Their project, Listen, Let's Talk, was presented to our jury after 48 hours of intense teamwork, and keep in mind, all happening online with time difference. With Listen, they came up with this card game, which was their answer to help couples communicate better during the confinement. Their project was very well presented, very intelligent, responding to the brief. It was perfect. They also made a beautiful presentation. They came up with the logo, the cards design, the rules of the game. It was really impressive to see what they had produced in such a short amount of time. The jury loved it, but they didn't win. They got second place. But they didn't stop there. They could have simply gone back to their lives um, but they decided to, together as a team, to keep going and push the project forward. They put a Kickstarter together, reached their financial goal, 
finalize the design of the game, figure out production, and in less than 10 months after they met, or virtually met, the first games were delivered to their Kickstarter backers and uh, their first clients. Now you can buy uh, the game at the Wanted Design store in Brooklyn. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. And we keep talking about them because we're so grateful that we were able to witness such a beautiful story. It's a story of friendship, generosity, and passion. And they were able to achieve something amazing. And now this experience will mark their professional and personal lives forever. But the key was that they said yes. They first said yes, and they showed up. They were curious enough to jump into this, which takes us to our next slide. Yes. We like that slide. It reminds us a good moment, right? The original team. So let's start with a nice quote from Achille Castiglioni. If you are not curious, forget it. Yes, please be curious. I think that's one of the main qualities that you should all, all have. So ask questions, look for answers, meet new people, read, explore. I have to say one of the most exciting things we are doing every day are the unplanned and unexpected ones. It means for you, taking a path that was not in your radar or obvious. It's speaking with someone new. It's accepting an invitation to a place you never planned to go. It's trying something you had never done before or a tool you never used before. And we have, we have many examples of amazing things that happen to curious young designers, right? For instance, young designers from abroad who came to want a design here in Brooklyn and took full advantage of being a full week in New York. And they will talk to everyone searching for advices, for opportunities. Uh, eventually, we find an internship in New York and then a job because they realized that's where they wanted to live. So really, that's super important. Be constantly curious. Talk to people. Don't be shy and go out of your comfort zone. And this is how we run Wanted Design, always being curious and interested in hearing the stories, meeting new people. And honestly, this is the best part of what we do and the only way you can build a meaningful project. Discover, knock on the doors, reach out to the world and let the world come to you. And last but not least, um, not the favorite part for some of you maybe, but uh, the business advice. Um, yeah, the big question that most of you might be asking yourself now is how do I make money being a designer? Well, when you finish school, you have several options, right? You can start your own studio alone or in collaboration with one or more designers. Uh, you can work for a design firm. You can join a design team. Um, there are different different path and you can also start with one and change your mind later that's that's fine uh, but the key is to get moving and, and get started so if you want to start your own studio uh, you'll need a business plan and our advice is that you can't take that step uh, you can't not take that step seriously there are plenty of resources online that you can tap into and that's also where your network comes handy uh, remember when we talked about making friends? Well, that's when you call your friends. Um, if you don't know how to do something, call your friends. Think about collaborating with others who have different skills than you. What's key to understand is that is your strengths and weaknesses. What, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? So you can put your strength to work and find ways to compensate for your weaknesses. And this part of the business plan homework is very important. So please put some time into it if you consider um, launching your own studio. It can feel overwhelming launching your own studio. And if you have a vision for it, you should really persist, work hard and follow the steps of the business plan and it will happen. We've seen it over the last decade, it happens. Uh, and if you're not an entrepreneur at heart, that's totally fine too. You still want to treat your career as a design project. Apply your creative thinking and positive energy to your job search. What is important for you? What do you want to work on? What is unique about your profile? What's your purpose? And write those down, make plans and go for it. And please use 
your network. Never stop nurturing your creativity and working on your design skills. Be part of the conversation and make your voice and vision heard to others. The next success story Odile is about to share with you is the story of a young, shy Turkish designer who participated to Launchpad at One Design Manhattan in 2016. Yes, uh, before ending this presentation and moving to questions and hopefully conversations, let's share the, this last inspiring and nice success story from Launchpad program. So this is indeed the story of Turkish-born Begum Kana Osgur, who graduated from Cranbrook in 2013. And uh, fast forward, she participated in Launchpad Wanted Design in 2016, presenting her textile and rug prototypes. That year, like the other years, I believe, Nani Martina from Spain visited the show as she was scouting new designers to work with. And she felt in love with Begum's work. And you have seen the picture that so many people fell in love, not just Nani Marquina. So Nani Marquina decided to collaborate with her and to produce the rock collection under the Nani Marquina brand. The shed collection was launched two years later in New York, Paris, Milan, within the main trade show. And Begum was invited there to present herself, to present the collection with the team. And the collection remains an important one for the brand today. Now it's also existing for outdoor. So that was really a launch pad for Begum and a turning point for her career. She was able to develop more projects with the brand, but also many more at an international level. So we love her, we follow her, and she's an amazing designer. And with that beautiful project and, and story, uh, we are ending this formal presentation. We hope you are all here still with us. And uh, we are ready, right, to hear your questions, your comments. So let's have a conversation, right? Can we? Yes, great. Thank you both so much for those insights and examples. We are going to jump over to audience Q&A. Students definitely send your questions in. As a reminder, you can find that Q&A button either at the top or bottom of your screen. First question that we have is, in your introduction of one to design, you emphasize the key to timing upon meeting one another, and perhaps it's allowance for creation and success of one to design. Was there an instinctual feeling or indicator? And what would you say to those of us who are beginning in the industry, feel a little bit behind, but are eager to identify and find success? Thank you, Alisa. Uh, it's a great question. Um, the, well, the, the first part of, of the answer, I guess, is back to what we were saying earlier about saying yes. Uh, before that good timing, there was a moment where when that person introduced us, one of us could have said, oh, no, I'm not going to that meeting. Oh, you know what? I'll call that person another time, and then you never do. So before it's a good timing and there is an instinct there was a yes moment where we were both like okay yes let's grab coffee yes let's keep talking yes let's have that conversation so that's that's something we always uh remind the young designers we talk to is start with saying yes and show up because the that instinct can't happen if you just stay at home, you know, in your sofa, just waiting for things to happen. The instinct, you, you won't feel anything. You won't feel it. Uh, that gut feeling comes with the conversation, the exchange, uh, meeting new people, feeling inspired by someone. When we first met with Odile, I was very inspired with what she was doing and she got inspired by what I did. And we both had things to bring to the table. So that instinct was born out of this moment, but before that we had to get together. So the first part of the answer um, for me, and then I'll let Odile give hers, would be th these moments happen when you start saying yes and that you show up. No, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, for sure, there was, a, there was this yes thing uh, and, and just be curious. <laughs> it goes also back to be curious. But I think it's right. Uh, we could have met maybe a year before and, or two years before and maybe 
we were not prepared for it. So there is also, there is always a combination that that's general in life, right? Uh, you can meet someone at a point of your life and it doesn't bring you to anything special, but if you meet this person later on, uh, that's the right timing for, for jumping into the train. I always say when a train, you know, pass, jump, jump, <laughs> if you feel it, jump into it, because when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, and it's true, it's, it's, honestly, it's so rare to meet with someone that you work with for so many years. Uh, so yeah, there is a mix of instinct and you have to trust yourself and you have to trust the other one. And you, you have to trust at one point when we say it, it's literally how it happened. Uh, we had a three hours conversation. We, we had no idea. Who, I had no idea about Claire's life and she didn't know at all who I was before. So we just, after this three or four hours conversation, we just realized that we had the same goal, the same vision, but doing it together will bring us to make it happen when maybe, and I was, it was already a few years, I was thinking about doing another event outside of my gallery and Claire also was already, you know, thinking about it, preparing for an event, but we realized that doing it together certainly was the best way to make it happen. Uh, and that's also something very important on, and I, I'm really telling you all, if you find someone it's to work with, it's so much nicer than being isolated. So find someone where, with who you enjoy working with. And, and quickly to add on that, I know you, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, we quickly realized and we told ourselves, we will always work with people that we enjoy working with. And it happens, you know, along the year, there is always the one year where you have one participant who is unhappy, who is sending bad vibes. So now I think we are getting better and better to identify and we attract also people who work like, like us, right? With the same passion, the same energy. Uh, and that's really important. Don't go a direction where there is so, so much bad, you know, bad vibes, bad energy. Really embrace what you feel is aligned with what you want to do, where you want to go, how you work. It's also a question of how you work because you can share the same vision for a show but not at all have the same method or, you know, when, when we work together, we don't have to tell, oh, you do that, I'm doing that. We know exactly who's doing what. We know exactly who's going to respond to that email. So this is a gift to find someone you can work with like that. But again, there are so many people to meet. You have so many years in front of you. So again, continue, be curious. Um, and one day you'll find someone you really want to work with. Uh, and, um, and, right? Yeah, let's move to the other question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All excellent points. Uh, how would you like the design industry to change in the next 10 years? How would we like the design industry to change in the next 10 years? Well, actually, we just uh, hosted a webinar ourselves uh, earlier today um, on a project called Eco Solidarity. We invite everyone to go to wantedesign.online to discover uh, what this is about. But this is what we feel design should be in the next 10 years, which is uh, focusing on the role of designers, uh, the role of architects and interior designers to be uh, more conscious, be careful uh, in consumption and sustainability issues by um, you know, trying to do a better job, uh, changing the bad habits that we've, that we've all taken over the years. And our industry is, um, you know, look, I mean, part of our industry, the luxury end of our industry is pretty sustainable in, in some ways, but there's so much work uh, in terms of the everyday design, like design around ourselves, like this, the considering everything design and, and trying to open people's minds on design so they can consume more responsibly and having designers who design more responsibly. So creating a, um, a chain that is a little more uh, sustainable for, for our future. So the conscious design part is something that we really, really trying to address uh, giving the voice to projects and designers who work on, on this. Eco-solidarity is an example, but we also just um, hosted some designer showcase online uh, that um, were putting the spotlight on uh, conscious design projects. And those projects are also on Montdesign.online uh, and they were part of the conscious design awards. 
um, but it is it is how we would love the next 10 years to uh, see the industry evolve in a more sustainable way. And I will just add on that, that uh, certainly we hope that uh, uh, the, uh, the creatives at large and designers in particular can think about everyone. So it's not just designing for an elite or for an exclusive group of people, but being more inclusive. We can bring, we talk a lot about, you know, wellness, well-being, and how we can create beautiful uh, interiors, uh, embracing those notions and hospitality, and which is fantastic. But we also know that designers can bring those notions of wellness and well-being to everyone. And, and that's also part of the, the Eco Solidarity project that, that we are showcasing. Uh, we have 12 studios who, who truly are dedicated to design for everyone, working with uh, you know, cities and government to help uh, in countries that you have so many people uh, homeless and outside in the street. So how designers can actually shape uh, tomorrow's world. I mean, that's, that's a bit uh, uh, idealist, but uh, I mean, I think there is really, uh, our, our, our hope is that really the designers, so all of you who are listening today, you understand the responsibility you have and how much you can do to actually shape a better tomorrow. You, have, you really have a lot of, uh, um, think influence and, and not just influence, but you can make things happening. So it's really, you have a great responsibility to so take it and, and make those change. Absolutely. How do you decide which designers to showcase and to work with? So it's, if I can start with, I mean, it's a very organic process. We, 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 had a, we have a chance to meet with, uh, with many people, but we always, uh, decided to showcase what we uh, believe are original design first. This is really notion that we, we believe uh, in and we, we embrace since the very beginning. Uh, we really love wanted design to mix uh, established brands that we love, that we think are the most you know, innovative and, and, and bringing new ideas uh, with uh, up and coming talents. Uh, so it's really a mix of um, showcasing, putting the spotlight on American design, which is something that we are passionate about. Uh, and, and funny enough, for two French <laughs> New Yorker women, we started Wanted Design also uh, because we thought we needed to talk about American design. Uh, talking with uh, our friends in Europe, we realized that no one really understood neither who are the designers, what's happening, what's the landscape in the, in the United States, but also the market. How does that work? So it's very important for us to also bring that, that component uh, and, and mixing with international talent. So it's really what we love is to actually uh, compose, uh, bring the best of uh, whoever we have a chance to meet, uh, whoever is contacting us. It's very easy. We are always open and it's part of saying yes. We rarely say, no, we don't want to talk to you. So anyone from a students to a very established person who is contacting us, we always start with a conversation because sometimes we can think, Mm, not saying this is a good design, not saying I want this company to be part of wanted. But in fact, when we talk to them, when we understand better what they do, when we discover really what they do, uh, sometimes it, it ends up being a really interesting, you know, uh, company. So again, it's very organic. Uh, we spend a lot, a lot of time. Uh, it's uh, really about speaking with people, meeting. We, uh, unfortunately, those two last year, we didn't travel too much, but really what we love to do is to travel. So first of all, we decided we need to understand what's happening across America. So we went to Detroit, we went to Chicago, we went to Philadelphia, we went to um, Seattle. We did an amazing trip visiting the Design Week uh, all over North America, Toronto, uh, Mexico. So just to meet with people and discover those talents. And we follow them year after year. And those sometimes debuted at Wanted Design, like you have seen in the presentation. And years later, they are you know, doing a great career. So um, yeah, we, I think we started to, we have a mix of instinct about, oh, this person is amazing, never showed before anywhere, but oh, wow, this is amazing. Discovery, we fell in love. It's, it's a mix of the beauty of the work and the personality. So we love, again, we love, we love bringing on board. We are building a wanted design family. <laughs> Sometimes people tell us, uh, wow, we are part of one design family and uh, we like that. So again, it's uh, very organic and uh, 
Claire, maybe you want to add something? Yeah, I added in the in the chat um, a link. Um, we have a program at One Design Manhattan called Launchpad, and it is for um, designers to show prototypes. Meaning, you don't need to have a product that uh, that's already uh, distributed or manufactured. It it, it is uh, for prototypes. Uh, so it's a great program for uh, either students or recently graduated students or designers who are changing their career or want to try something different. Um, it's uh, it's going to be at One Design Manhattan this year because of the situation. It's going to be in November at the Javits Center with ICFF, the International Contemporary Furniture Fair. Um, and then 2022, I'll go back in May, which is our regular time. But if you want to apply this year, if you have a prototype to show and you want to be part of a trade show, we encourage you to uh, apply to One Design Manhattan to the Launchpad program, and you can use the link in the chat. Thank you. And that's okay. international. It's not just American designer, just adding that. Great. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Next question that we have is, do you think it's important for designers now to have an online presence, you know, something along the lines of a design Instagram account? So I'm going to say yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say yes, but um, what's, what's uh, really important is that everyone finds their path. So it's not because something works for someone that it has to work for everyone. Uh, if you, as a young designers, as a young designer, do not feel comfortable with social media, um, and you don't want to connect with the rest of the world, and you want to build uh, a small network in your community, and maybe you have a wood maker next to you, and you have a glass maker, and that little world is enough for you that you can. Uh, be a designer and, and find your purpose and work towards your goals. I would say you don't need Instagram. It's, it all depends on your values and what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it. Now, if you say, I want to be an international renowned designer and in 10 years, I want to be on the cover of magazines. And uh, yes, you need an Instagram account and you need to start building it now because it takes years of consistency um, and, and work uh, to be seen by the media, for example. Uh, and being seen one year is not enough. You have to keep showing up. You have to keep doing what you're doing. You can change a little bit the way you do things, but at the same time, consistency, hard work, and um, the, the constant presence online, in that case, uh, for specifically for this question, is really important. So yes and no. Yeah, and I would say that nothing replaced the in-person because at the end, of course, you, need, you want to showcase and it's just giving you an additional chance to be seen, but please go. I mean, and it all depends where you live because you may live uh, in the you know, remote countryside. I don't know, hopefully we have people, uh, I'd love to know where, where you are based, all of you who are listening today, but uh, maybe you live in the big cities where you have a chance to have have many events happening, so you can go there, you can go to opening, you can, you can meet people in person, um, and you can go to the fair if you are lucky enough, but uh, uh, it's, it really all depends as well where you are based. Uh, it will be a shame not to use the online, and, <laughs> because the digital is now the, the way we live in, but again, I mean, it doesn't replace that at the end you have to produce good work and you have to meet with people because at the end people will want to work with you also because of who you are again so it's a combination of presenting your work being seen but also meet people and talk to people absolutely aside from the launch pad link do you have any other recommendations for sites or resources where students can find opportunities or events to meet like-minded pieces people and additionally, any favorite books or periodicals that you would recommend? So on wantdesign.online right now, there's a ton of content. There is the Eco-Solidarity um, exhibition that is extremely interesting in terms of uh, conscious design research projects. So 
go to that, research, look at all of them and really dig into it. It's super interesting. Then we still have uh, in the past exhibition, in the menu, there's a little past exhibition section. We still have the Conscious Design Awards uh, available to uh, look at and the entire uh, Want Design International School Show that just ended um, on Saturday. But it's the content is still there and you can just go browse and look at the event section because the three events are past events, but there is a podcast for one that is really aligned with what we just presented, but it's different people saying it. Um, so watch the, the replay of this, which is actually now a clever podcast. Um, and that was the May 12th. Uh, and then the two other events, the Emerging Designer Showcase, the replays are available, watch this because you'll see other students presenting to professionals, all members of Be Original Americas, by the way. Um, and it's a great way to, uh, to see what works, what doesn't work and see how the professional reacted to it. Um, my pick for resource uh, Clever Podcast is definitely uh, one of our favorites. And we encourage all of you to uh, listen, listen to, uh, to the episodes. They are all very, very good, very insightful. Um, and then in terms of book, uh, there was on one of the slide, um, a title of a book that I actually highly recommend you to read. It's called Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And it is um, just more of a personal development book on how to apprehend uh, challenges and turn them into opportunities. So I really encourage you to read that one. And then the other one that um, uh, was very important for us, uh, it, it all, it's always important actually, it's Design the Life You Love by Aisha Bursell. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a workbook. So you can take notes and draw and it forces you and we are not designers, but we enjoyed uh, reading that book and doing it. But I'm sure as a designer, it's even more fun because you get to uh, draw and design. So those, those are my picks. Yeah, I will add that if you want to be a good designer, I will encourage you to not just look at design books and design you know, blog. Of course, you want to look at those to see the opportunities and any blogs, any, you know, uh, design magazine, international ones you should look at, but also you'll find interesting resource and ideas and inspiration in continuing all the time to just watch the news, understand the world, because you, you will be responding to, you know, what the world needs from you. So you have to be educated. You have, you have to, to always, you know, follow, uh, look at things that will inspire you, look at the, the news, watch the news, uh, again, travel if you can, but if you can follow any blogs that talk about culture, that talks about countries, that talks about people, uh, because that's where you will find your inspiration and that's where you will find a relevant response. Uh, that's how you will do provide work that is relevant. Uh, so I encourage you to educate your eyes uh, your, and, and listen to things, smell things, feel things. And um, yeah, nature, immerse yourself into nature. Not everything, not the answers are in the cities. You'll find answers as well in nature. So yeah. Uh, I don't know if I answered the question, but yes. <laughs> no, that was perfect. And if I might add that on the Be Original America's website, we have all the replays from last year's fellowship. So that's certainly a great resource to also check out. I, I just want to add Core 77, who has been a great partner of us. Uh, and it's a great resource for not only interesting deep article about design, but also uh, job opportunities. Uh, there are all, media partner as well for the for design school workshop we just did last last week uh, for many years and they always share interesting you know uh, article uh, and there there are a lot of awards i think as well that you should look at as young designers all the opportunities metropolis magazine also i mean really research all the awards you can apply to because awards is a great way for you young designers at the nyc by design awards but also all the Again, the, the more and more there, there are categories dedicated to students, and it's hopefully it's free because uh, I think the awards most of the time for for applying for students are free. Do it. I mean, we are, we, we do the Conscious Design Award uh, 
but we have done other competitions and awards, it's a great opportunity to be seen, to be published. So search for that. Absolutely. We are just about out of time. And I know that this entire conversation has been filled with amazing advice. But my last question is, do you have any final words of wisdom or advice for the students listening today? Show up and be original. Keep, keep going. Uh, keep going, Try, uh, work a lot. Uh, uh, but I think uh, we need you, the world needs designers. So find, find your path, find, find what you are good at and find what you really want to do. Find your, design your path. And I think that was also the, the, the talk we had recently, uh, design, your, design your, your, your career. You'll find, you'll find your own way. Absolutely. Well, students, thank you so much for joining us today. I apologize if we didn't get to your question. If you want to learn more about Want to Design, you can visit wanttodesignnyc.com. If you want to learn more about Be Original Americas, you can visit theoriginalamericas.com. Claire, Odile, I want to say a huge thank you. This has been a fantastic talk. We really appreciate you taking the time. And students, we will see you on the next one. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you.